We'd like people to remember that Sherry was 23 years old the day she went to work at UCLA for the last time, um, that she was a young girl living her life to the fullest. She really, really wanted to make a difference in the world. She really wanted to change it. Shehar Bano Sanji, Sherry to her friends, was employed as a laboratory research assistant at the University of California, Los Angeles. She had just received her bachelor's degree in chemistry and was applying to law schools. On December 29, 2008, Ms. Sanji was transferring a highly reactive chemical when some of it sprayed onto her hands and synthetic sweater and spontaneously ignited. Sherry's older sister, Naveen Sanji, now a surgical resident at Harvard, recalls the day of the accident. When my phone rang unexpectedly um, and I saw that Sherry was calling me, I thought she was calling to tell me about another law school that she'd heard from. And um, it turned out to be a social worker from the UCLA Medical Center who told me what happened and I was in shock. She had deep third degree burns to over 40% of her body. Sherry Sanji died from her injuries 18 days after the laboratory accident. There was a life ahead that she was really looking forward to that was cut short by what happened to her at UCLA. On December 29, 2008, when most of the campus was closed for holiday vacation, Sherry Sanji was working on a research project at the UCLA Chemistry Department. According to a report by California State OSHA, Ms. Sanji was using a syringe to transfer a solution of tertiary butyl lithium, a dangerous pyrophoric chemical that ignites spontaneously on contact with air. Somehow, the plunger came out of the syringe barrel. The chemical was exposed to air. It caught on fire. She also had an open flask of a flammable solvent in the hood where she was working. She knocked that over, that caught fire as well. Chemist Dr. Jillian Kemsley reported extensively about the UCLA accident for Chemical and Engineering News, using documents obtained under California open records laws. My reaction to the news of uh, Sherry's death was just shock. Um, and I think pretty much the entire chemistry community was shocked. California OSHA cited UCLA's chemistry department for failing to require appropriate body protection for laboratory workers handling pyrophoric materials. An internal UCLA safety inspection of the same laboratory just two months prior to the accident found that personal protective equipment was not fully utilized by laboratory personnel. Yet on the day of the accident, Ms. Sanji had neither a flame-resistant lab coat nor the much more extensive protective clothing recommended by manufacturers of pyrophoric chemicals. Dr. Kemsley believes that even a flame-resistant lab coat would have helped. The flame-resistant lab coat would have given more time to react. It would have slowed the progress of the fire um, and probably would have meant that her injuries were less severe. And though the university said it provided adequate safety training for workers, California OSHA found no documented evidence of this. This accident has affected the campus in a profound way, uh, from, from my office to the PIs to the chancellor and the upper administration. And we all recognized that we had to make some um, changes to our program to further strengthen it. Dr. James Gibson, director of UCLA's Environment, Health, and Safety Office, says UCLA has taken steps to improve safety accountability and oversight improve training, provide proper protective equipment, conduct unannounced safety inspections, and improve laboratory safety culture. It's not going to happen overnight. That is something that's going to be a multiple year process to really change the safety culture to where we think we should be. And Dr. Gibson urges other universities to take steps to improve their education, training, and safety culture. Once we get people to do that, we're going to see a dramatic decrease in the number of accidents that occur. One of our main aims is to try and make sure that this doesn't happen again and that no one has to go through what we went through.
A lost life is not just an anonymous loss of life, but real people and families are profoundly affected. Safety has to be an absolute priority and the first priority for any laboratory.